take with you all. The title of this, let's say, debate is called Photography in Action, Contestation, Activation, and Intervention. And you know it's uh, linked with the very core of this uh, edition of Photo Festival. At the beginning, I just have to give you some uh, information. So as you can see, there is Christopher, uh, instead of uh, artists from Norway. <laughs> I'm going to speak Norwegian today. Uh, so this is one change. The second, this is this is Julia, and Julia will have to leave us a little bit earlier. So we'll start with the question. And this is Sergio. Some of you just have a great opportunity to listen to his uh, curator trip, like uh, one hour ago. I, I think maybe some of you uh, participated in this. So. Um, well, I just want to give you a short introduction that I guess we all agree that the world we live in, it's, uh, well, it should be changed in many fields, in many ways, but this is other discussion for us. The question is how we can use photography to make this change, or is photography efficient as a tool for change, and how we may uh, use it uh, to gain change by using photography, and maybe also uh, visual media. media. So, the question we want to ask basically is, are all those uh, photographical projects, are those efforts and sometimes very hard work, is it efficient? And if it's efficient, under what condition uh, they might bring effects? So the idea basically is that we want to talk with the artists and curators, uh, how they work, and uh, just very short introduction, because some of you, we know already each other. So, uh, Julia Szabłowska, she is from uh, a journalist from Belarus. She is a volunteer, she is a photographer, but most of all, she works as, as a um, person who organized the workshop for the youth and for the kids. They were forced to migration, the youth and kids from Ukraine and, and Belarus. Uh, by the way, uh, Julia will say about this later on, but. She brought us uh, a gift, so some of you who want to get such a such a small album, you can you, you can have it after the the panel. Well, it's uh, hard to say something new about Christopher. Already, you know him from 22 years. Uh, I know him maybe from 23 or 4 years. So, uh, curator and uh, someone who is mostly responsible for the main program and everything was going on here. And finally, our great guest, not for the very first time in Poland, uh, Sergio Venezuela Escobado, who is responsible from the three exhibitions we have here. And I like very much you describe yourself, artist researcher, because this is what I'm basically very interested in now, so this connection between art and science. Um, so, you, you, you originally are from Chile, but you live in, in Paris, yeah, in, France. in no. France, in France, sorry. Uh, so let us start, okay? And Julia, first, first question is for you, because um, as you know, there are many possibilities using photography to make the change. And I would say you are on the, like, the very front line, first front line. You work with the, with the people who suffer a certain kind of the trajectory lost and uh, so I would like you to describe the, the idea of the workshops, okay? Uh, how was it born, how it is developing, and uh, how it works now? Can you have, uh, thank you for having me. And behind me you can see some photo from uh, exhibition, our exhibition here in Lutz, in uh, some workshop. Uh, okay, how we start? Uh, my project is project about teenage young people and children here in Poland from Belarus and uh, Ukraine. Okay, I was a little bit nervous because <laughs> and I some have, okay. Here, here is photo from Wood, here photo from Warsaw. Okay, a new home project start two years ago. I'm working on a material for uh, Polish magazine Pismo. Uh, we start with my friend from Russia. I know how it sounds, but it's okay. Uh, we talked about some Syria photography from shelter Mirny Dom. It's uh, like piece of ho house of peace. It's place for 
people from Ukraine and Belarus who need to housing uh, temporary housing and first uh, aid sometimes sometimes first uh, getting to uh, some documents here in Poland and we created uh, together some seria photo seria about house her life here and I started to think about some workshop or some event together but how we all know in February 2022 war in Ukraine started and I have no time to do something else about after my work in Belsat TV and uh, my come back to topic uh, workshop or some event for teenage and young people happening I think in April 2022 and we started from planning some event we talked about this event with Humanish Foundation it's uh, founder new home uh, home project sorry it's founder Mirne Dom, Peace of ha House of Peace and almost six months we preparing this workshop or some event and one organization, uh, journalist organization helped Humanos buying some camera for this workshop and we start to take a photo. And I have I had no plan for this workshop. It's it's I think it's great time together with photography in some funny place and new place for uh, for uh, children. It's some like uh, museum uh, museum Wolnej Białorusi, jak to się tłumaczy, że museum free free Belarus, yeah, and uh, Institute of Photography for something like that. And uh, I sometimes I'm fe uh, I feel it's very good way about talk yourself in this moment here and now but now I I see it's very very good point for grow up in photography for young people thank you very much and uh, we all have the opportunity to see the part of the of your work yes and first in the in this album but also there is exhibition yes yeah in exhibition is available at uh, uh, to Vima 10, it's uh, Fabrika Aktywności Miejskiej. You, if you <laughs> really, if you want to see, we have uh, what we have done. You are welcome to Vima 10. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I guess I would have much more questions about your relation with these young people and uh, how you deal with uh, with organizing this. Because as far as I understand, the, they have no experience in photography. Yeah? Yeah. So, are you also teaching them how to take them, or you just give them free will and take what you want? Yes, it's something like uh, you have a photo, a photo camera. I use Olympus Neo. The children use it one shot, one shot camera, something like that. And if you want to take photo here and right now, please do it. If you don't want, it's your your decision. It's only. Why am I asking? Because uh, you, you have sent me uh, pictures and I took a closer look and you, you may look at them now and they are very good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's, it's, only, it's only decision if I feel it, I get it. No, it's the work. Okay, last question maybe in this set. If you make prepare the exhibition, yeah. do you uh, make this selection together with the, with the kids or it's up to you, you are a curator then? And yeah, something like that, up them? to me. It's, it's, all, uh, it's all decision up to me. Sometimes we work with Joanna Kinowska, but this exhibition is only my decision. Yeah. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. And maybe, uh, Sergio, I'd like to ask you, because uh, here you, you, you also work as an artist, but here you, you, you mostly work or present yourself as a, as a curator. And, for me, it's also a very interesting point. So, activating some processes, activating some 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 project, maybe even coordinating. Today we have we had the chance to see you, but also the artists that you cooperate with. And I would like to ask you how you develop this idea of I would say a, a more active curator, also somebody who is maybe a little bit not someone who decides where to put some images on the wall, 
but someone who is leading the whole project. I mean, this is how I understand your practice and how you develop it, if you could tell us something about it. Yeah, so I guess that the, the definition of curator, which I like the most, it's the one that could get close to Spanish, which is my language is curador, which is called it's close to healing or to someone who takes care of someone, of something. And in this particular case, uh, my work as an artist was, I decided in a moment because of personal reasons to put it out, but I didn't want it to stop being creative. So uh, in, that, uh, in that way, I, I just wanted to continue my work with someone, with, within, some, within the project. It's not, it's not with, it's like, inside which is which is more or less what I, I try to do and the relationship start from very early um, actually the, the the moment where this was born at least in my head it was uh, after Monsanto we, we, we did an exhibition in uh, Arles with Mathieu Celan uh, then that I will ah uh, our very good friend Christophe uh, took it uh, and brought us here in Uchi in 2018, as I said be, uh, before. And we were nominated to the Deutsche Post uh, Prize in, uh, in London. And the Photographer's Gallery was a space which was not big enough and we had quite, of, quite problems in being nominated to that. Of course, uh, Mathieu was very happy because you get to, to you get into a nomination, which are your pairs that are giving you a nomination. But at the same time, we had the Deutsche Börse as a sponsor, which they sells the shares of Monsanto and Bayer at that time. So that was the first uh, step when we decide we need to act, we need to change, we need to work together in order to develop something else. So we invent a new chapter together. Uh, we call it the stock market, and we wanted to put very clearly that we were happy to be there because uh, the price is, as I said before, given by the other photographers, the author, but that the sponsor of the exhibition was there. So we start to collaborate really, really deeply. So it's like the book was finished when they got the nomination to the Deutsche Post, but we add something else. And in that way, I think the most important thing is the trust that artists give me and the, this is the way we work. If there is no trust, then it's very, very difficult to work. So in this particular case, we invent the chapter, and I realized that this was a way of working with the artist, in this case, Mathieu. But then later, I just follow in this idea, working with the artist since the very beginning of the project. Thank you very much, and uh, I guess this is a very interesting observation that the word curator comes from the cure, and cure it means to heal. So I like this idea very much. And uh, uh, now I guess I have to ask this question, no matter how naive it is, but maybe, it, maybe it's not that naive because we are all here and somehow discuss this problem matter, because we all know from the history of photography a lot of projects that meant to change something, and some of them su succeed. And uh, the question is, uh, from nowadays perspective, how you evaluate the potential of photography to, to, to make the change? And uh, Julia, let me start with you. Yeah, it's a very short question, a uh, very short answer. I think we, we needed to use uh, all tools where Instagram, TikTok, and Reels. I know how it sounds, but I, I like it. I love it, and the very more time I spend on my Instagram is so stupid things. Why we do not? I think we need to use this tool because photojournalism and documentary photography more, more, more interesting needs. This photo, this video with dogs. I love dogs, but. So you suggest <laughs> to use these things yeah. like Instagram, TikTok, and so on to, yeah. to, to upload the uh, important messages, yeah. yes, and uh, good pictures, important pictures, and so on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Crystal, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry for me, but I need to go. Yes, thank you so much that you've been <laughs> here. Yeah. If you have some question here, you 
have QR code for Instagram and please send me message or your question I can text you. Okay, thank you so much. Christoph, the same question for you because uh, uh, well, I, I'm almost I said the most bigger part of your life you are doing something with photography now and uh, uh, I can observe certain kind of the change in your attitude and the way you think about photography and the way you shape the program of, the, of this festival but also some other events uh, you have done not only in Łódź but in other cities in, in other countries but uh, let me ask you what is the change that you have noticed uh, in you that you think that because I see you now a little bit more as a maybe activist than curator and this is the change that I have noticed and am I right? Yeah, I think within the years uh, my way of thinking about photography completely radically changed. The beginning like, a, and, and it's visible like uh, my personal change is also like uh, parallel to the festival of photography change and also pho how photography globally changed. Like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there were still like classical festival of photography, uh, very kind of machoistic. It was just festivals for guys with their cameras and exchanging technical knowledge There's about Nothing photography. wrong with the guys with the camera, by the way. <laughs> by the way, no. But our festival was the same. We Our way was the same. First uh, uh, approaches, exhibitions, it was purely aesthetical approach, very formal. And then with the, with the, with the time, uh, even like with our sociological approach, we have a very sociological roots. Uh, uh, most of the uh, people that started the festival were sociologists. Uh, we understood that, that photography is really a tool and it's really powerful. And we saw this while the festival was kind of growing and we extended the audience because we, we cannot convince our bubble. Like when we talk about very, very crucial issues, political, environmental, there's not so much to encourage and or in our, you know, to, in, a, in, in the audience that is already here in this room. But there's so much to do uh, in the much broader neighborhoods, uh, for instance, in Wuch, in Baut, or in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in many other like uh, projects. This one is an example of, maybe it was not clear, clearly said, that it's also integration of Polish, Ukrainian, Belarusian teenagers, like the, their kids that are 14, 15, 16 years old, working together since the very beginning without fear, knowing each other cultures, and that was uh, the main purpose uh, uh, for us. So photography itself uh, was just the, uh, the tool to, to reach the wider, broader audiences and communities. And after 20 years of the festival, we really even wanted to, to, to change the name for the festival, but uh, to, not to stick to this classical way of thinking, but uh, uh, instead of this, because we were recognized, we put art, engagement, and community. And I think this uh, link, even with uh, like what you do, it's really all about community and to, to extend uh, uh, what we do. And the last thing that I wanted to say is, for instance, I'm here because I should be, uh, the, it should be Io Striversen, and her beautiful 15 minutes uh, uh, film that is available on the second floor, this is the answer, actually. She uh, took part in the climate uh, um, uh, activist community. Uh, uh, at the same time, she was part of it and filming it uh, in, in Norway. And uh, the result was the protest against the petroleum company that was uh, making extractions uh, in, uh, in the beautiful fjords of Norway. So the group of teenagers influenced uh, local authorities uh, and finally the big petroleum company backed off and uh, resigned. And this is the strength of 15 years old teenagers mainly, like the climate activists that, uh, uh, that, that could block a huge capitalistic project. And for me that, and the tool was basically photography, film, and like spreading this in social media so yes, photography is really powerful. Yeah, okay, <laughs> you can see some shots from the film, uh, and you can see the whole 
production on the second floor. So, yeah, we may also say that it, it was possible maybe because it was in Norway, a democratic, democratic country and so on and so on. We don't know how powerful it is in some other, let's say, um, countries. So, uh, Sergio, I would like to ask you because here, you, those three projects are very, very much involved into the community um, and very much involved in, into the certain kind of the fight or for the identity or for the nature or just simply for the, for, for the preserving the way of living. And I would like to ask you about the, yeah, the efficiency of the project you have, you have done. Have you noticed or uh, uh, that something has changed, that people are maybe more aware or uh, in the field of the reaction? You know, so you are doing a lot of work and research and artistic and so on and so on, but what about the effect? Yeah, um, I think you say the right word to answer that question, which is awareness. Uh, art and photography will not change the world. Uh, it's the citizens that are coming to the exhibitions, that are looking to the images, that are going back home, are getting a little bit of a little text, maybe an image, maybe the whole narrative, maybe one little bit of the history. But actually, what the image do? It's 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 aware. It's everything. It's about trying to, at least, under my opinion, trying to make the citizens and um, the visitors of the exhibition to be aware of what is happening. But to just to answer the, your question. Your, Question before the art, like 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 it's now, it's it's not it's, it's not going to change. It's it's us, it's yeah. us and the people who's coming to the exhibitions. Yeah, because what I what I think that informing, showing, presenting is also the way of uh, of taking an action. Yes, and this is this photography in action. Yeah, so letting people know what is what is happening. And you are both very experienced creators. You. you you, you travel, you see a lot of festivals, you know what is going on in, in photography nowadays. So now the next question, or maybe next issue, and after this question, I'm, maybe you have some, some question. Uh, uh, I don't even say to our guest, because you are not the guest, you're to, to organizers. So if you think about the future, but not the future of the planet, but the future of the medium, uh, even here during this festival, we can see some new things. One of your exhibition, it's also for me was 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 new the way you you, you present it. So, what do you think? Uh, how it's gonna evaluate and uh, how it's gonna change? How it's gonna uh, transform? Uh, in my opinion, I've I've seen so I work with different artists, uh, photographers, and we keep on discussing and this idea of we have discussed all these days about collectiveness and discussing being together, um, I think we've come with the conclusion, which is maybe today is a good one and maybe tomorrow is a bad one, but it's to turn, uh, turn the camera around. So let's stop focusing on the victims. Uh, the victims, we, we know how photojournalists work, they have the, the, their manners, and we have ours. So it's all about trying to now focus in the responsibles. And this is how I work. Uh, this is where I push the projects where I'm working with. So every time uh, since Monsanto, which was one of the biggest projects that I've done, it was well, very well known. Every, pro every project comes to me, it's about something bad. It's something the world is not right. There is victims. There is a problem with the hunting in Africa. There is... Uh, but then I always be up, but why do we keep on being interested only in the victims? And then that is the metaphorically way I've, I've been trying to theorize. It's maybe, maybe because it's easier to go well, and make the project uh, about the victims. Uh, we we have discussed about the easiness and also about the, the, the fact that the other way is very boring. So sometimes the picture will be a building, which is like big companies because photographers cannot get in. So we have tried, and then the pictures are very, very boring, and this is which is good about them. But some of them don't really agree with me, and then it's where the discussion and then this collaborativeness uh, starts. But uh, this idea of turning the camera around, looking at uh, the responsible of the problems, and not anymore the victim, to me, it's, it's not the future. We are not here to, to teach anyone. Uh, this is... We don't have any formula, we're just working, uh, sometimes having mis doing mistakes. For example, 
I always think that uh, people misunderstand that engaged photography or engaged curators or engaged uh, artists are activists. And to be honest, activists are the whole day in this. Activists are using their bodies, swimming, going to this kind of sky. They do crazy things, but they are there every single time. We are not activists, so we kind of maybe understand what they do, but it's not, I don't think that the, the line is such a close one. So when you, when you discuss on effectiveness, uh, if it is about, uh, for some of the projects, sometimes like, listen, you're not gonna change nothing with this, like you're doing it now, so maybe change, go and do some real activism. Just understand that photography is something else. It's not gonna change, as I said before, and yeah, I think that's, that's to me the, the future. Is let's look at the responsibles of the problem, even if it's boring, even if it's just people, we might have a lot of photos of people wearing ties, but those are, the, those are our problems. Yeah, yeah, I think it's an important distinction between the activists and the curators and photographers. I agree with you. It's, uh, it's not the same, and also I agree very much with the set you said upstairs, the complexity of the problem, yeah? trying to show the complexity. And Christoph, what is your opinion about this, this process? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was long ago. It's, <laughs> it's really about the future of photography, but as yeah. a medium or as a, also like as a, a tool, As a tool of the possible change, transforming, activation, uh, you know, integration, uh, taking action. Yeah, as we know, the, the medium is the message itself and the, and the medium is changing. So uh, I believe that uh, also like the impact of photography will change because photography is uh, uh, for teenagers, it's around eight hours uh, a day screen time, which is based on photography and text. Just a few thousand times, a few, few thousand times touching the screen again. So I think uh, in, in this way, uh, yeah, that's, that's the te technological part that for me it's uh, maybe less in, uh, interesting at the moment, uh, but I think we won't escape from all being overwhelmed with uh, this mass pro like overproduction of uh, images. Uh, but uh, I do hope that no matter if it will be uh, um, the new understanding of the medium and if uh, photography will be um, um, digital and uh, I, th I think it's, it's really not about the medium, it's, it's what you said, it's, uh, uh, if it's about consciousness, that uh, teaching and understanding photography uh, is it's, it's one of our missions to, to, to use it in a way that we can really inspire and touch. and, and Maybe um, this part, uh, I would like to just say something uh, that projects that for me that are really complex and uh, talking about photography are those that can inspire us intellectually but also really can touch our feelings. And there are certain exhibitions, like maybe I can count three or four exhibitions in my life that I was about to cry or I was crying. And most of the time it was not like uh, two dimensional photography. It was always uh, connected to film, multimedia, uh, sound. It was something more multisensory. So I think like the future of photography is really multisensory and very more authentic. The way we perceive reality is uh, multisensory. So uh, in the from the technical side, I think it's it, it, it's it's that. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, maybe now, if the, sorry, because I can see you, but uh, if you have some questions, this is a good opportunity. We have to to curators, and uh, if you want to ask some questions, please, uh, I, will, I will give you the microphone. Yes, okay. What do you think? What, what can we do uh, with this boringness of um, just reversing the camera? Like, when we want to um, actually review the people who create problems in our current work, uh, world, like the big tech companies and uh, the capitalists and stuff like that, how can we make um, this topic interesting in photography? Because for people who are interested already in activism, it will be quite obvious and uh, it can be even, I think, monumental if you 
can see this contrast between few activists standing uh, in front of this giant corporation building something like that but for most regular people it won't create these emotions that it should create this um, I think emotion of being overwhelmed with the system that works completely different than it should be so what do you think how can we create this feeling by photography um, and other arts maybe um, of feeling um, the feelings we should feel like the bad feelings about our system by revealing these big companies and these um, people who mostly create the problems uh, yeah thank you for for your question i i believe um, that uh, at least it's we, we once again this is not formulas formulas don't exist so i will just try to give you an answer by the experience i have or why the the mistakes and solutions that we found at least in these 10 years that we, we've been working. And I will come back to the idea of, of the fact that photography is not enough. So this idea means that some artistic devices, which are exhibitions, need to be what I call, as I said before, documentary perspectivism, which is related to point of view. So how much, how many point of view can you bring together in order to understand these complexities. And when I said complexities, means also invite the others, which is, in this case, the, uh, in, the, in, in a particular project, it could be the opposite. So you, it's, it's all together sitting, discussing, uh, which will be, at least for under my, my eyes, a better way to understand. When it comes to emotion, I think that, I mean, I, I, I understand that art, uh, can can provoke emotion. We we all cry in front of a beautiful painting, and we all suffer in front of an uh, engraving. But somehow, what I feel when I or what I I don't think about feeling, for example, when it's about the exhibition, which are research based, which I'm working with. But I somehow, if there is a feeling, I will love someone to say like angriness, like feeling, understanding so much the problem and understanding it so deeply that going out from the space saying, fuck this, I mean, like, that's the feeling, like, fuck them, like, and, and, and I don't know if it's a good feeling, but I don't know if art needs to be always this kind of entertainment, so I, I'm not looking for people coming out for the exhibitions happy or, or touch, like, emotionally speaking, no. I'm just aware not to f not to lose them because the main problem in, in for at least for me, which 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 there is exhibitions that are so open that okay, I understand subjectivity is there. It's subjectivity is something that, that we need to care about it. But if you go out from a project like uh, uh, Mama Coca and you just don't understand somehow, which is it's it's the very very limits between pedagogic and dialectic so it, it has to find a very specific way in the middle but you cannot go out saying ah yes i saw a project it was very funny that will be that i miss uh, the artist or the team miss something because this is also part of uh, working in a team all this project when it comes to multidisciplinary is i always use the same example when you go to the movies at the end of the movies, there is like millions of persons working. Sometimes in this exhibition, you go out and there is one guy or one woman. This is not how we work. We have producers, we have uh, uh, curators, poets, scientists, politicians. Uh, all of this together is the work. So to me, that's, that's the feeling is, you know, I don't know in English, it's angriness or... Uh, there is another word, but I cannot find it in English. But this, fuck, I don't know. Fuck. Just sorry, by my English. Just to add, I completely agree, and I think also like the the trick is not to be didactic, and some projects uh, have this tendency to, to to teach and to kind of uh, create certain pressure pressure that can be uh, create opposite effect. It can turn us off, and we we back off. We are afraid to touch something that uh, is start trying to teach us. And it's to, to find this uh, balance uh, to spread the message in a way that it's just pure and authentic. And you see the community or the, the, group, the group that you described that is uh, 
uh, struggling with certain issues. And I think as an artist, like uh, um, it, it, for, for, it, there is a new term called uh, very, uh, very often visual activism. And like for me, it's also balancing the emotions because when you work very close to difficult uh, issues like cl uh, climate change, and it creates lots of anger, fear, and uh, sadness. And uh, uh, for me, this role of artist is really extended. You are not just observing and documenting any anymore. You're really part of the process, and you have to deal also with uh, your like uh, inner work as well. You need to be prepared for that. And how many artists burned out? when they went too close to some communities, when they working, or especially photojournalists working, covering some uh, war photographers, or, or, act, uh, or many artists working in Latin America, seeing activists being killed and risking their life, uh, and so on and so forth. So we need this, like, really a base also. To, uh, but I think the answer, what I wanted to say, is just to have really clear and authentic direct message. Thank you, Christoph. And I'm sorry that I have to say that we are slowly running out of time, but we still have a time for one more question, okay? Yeah, actually, an another question, but a trigger from, from a question, which is now partly answered. Uh, I am a, a sometimes also curator, uh, and but I'm also audience, and uh, I think uh, that uh, that there is m that when what Chris said that the medium is the message. You you are <clears throat> as an as a maker also a medium. So there's there's more than just uh, the curatorial aspect of it. You you can also and I think when it comes to like really an action and you feel that you want change, you have to confront the enemy. So I think that you also need to seek other audiences by being yourself a person. Uh, going to uh, conferences or going to places where you don't find agreement immediately, uh, but that you can uh, bridge maybe mm, uh, that uh, gap uh, by presenting yourself like, to, to maybe the people that you oppose to initially to find solutions, uh, that it's a solution-driven mentality. Uh, and agitation, agitation and anger is maybe what is the driving force underneath it. Uh, but it's not going to, uh, it, it gives you maybe some kind of relief, but it's not going to make the change. So eventually, yeah, the enemy is also needs to be part of the process, I think, to, if you really want to make the change. And as a photographer, you have that solution, uh, that opportunity. But I think like photography is like, in terms of activistic photography, it's like a long-term investment. You've seen yesterday the exhibitions from Minsk uh, Photo Festival and from, uh, from Odessa Photo Days. These images stay with you and I think this is something that creates empathy. And I think this is like, for me, this is the conclusion. And also like uh, to mention Porto Biennale Photography it was called this year Acts of Empathy. And I think the power of uh, the medium of photography or moving or still image is that we can transmit and understand and create empathy. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sergio, would you like to add, add something? Mm -hmm. I mean, the point of, because as I understand you, you said it's nice, you would like to have this project that involved also or somehow present also the one who are on the other side, yeah? Well, uh, Chris mentioned like in the bubble, there's no one to convince, like everybody that... Uh, is convincing of the convincing, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we agree already uh, on beforehand, so yeah, yeah. that's okay. not going to uh, 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 yeah, yeah. hit you. Yeah, we, we, we are in that bubble, so the challenge is to also uh, present it to places in places where you might find disagreement, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I guess we get. But we do it. We present the Sergio exhibitions today in mass 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 media. There was like the most popular Tefawen pro, uh, program that is about more lifestyle and culture. But they were talking about Mama Coca and the uh, and the uh, ritual in habitual. They were discussing this project. So I think this is uh, the way to extend the audience for really mass audience. That's the it's the thing not to stay in an art world bubble. Yeah. No. I. I would just like to add. Uh, I completely agree with you. It's 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 uh, this bubble. It's it's also one of the problems. And 
as curators or, or artists, we need to find those ways. Uh, what is my experience uh, on this on this issue? I just will just quickly tell two. One is the fact that in Monsanto, for example, the press start using the images when this was the debate on the European Parliament against glyphosate. So at that moment, when we saw the project, like in a little hole in the same gallery, you saw the project go, goes out, and goes out and means that it's in the newsprint, it's in the media, which was not a work at the very beginning thought uh, to, 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 have to be there, then we saw it happen. It's, it was not like we didn't ask for it, but it happened. The second example is Laia Abril, uh, when she was, we, we meet uh, to discuss about some issues and I remember her winning a prize, like a very important prize with the, on abortion. But the, one of the prize was to be exhibited in um, uh, Madame Figaro, in the, in the um, office of Madame Figaro. So then, at that moment, it's, it was great because you will, as an artist, she was telling me, I, I, I'm not happy to be there because uh, th what is to be there? But actually, those were the people who don't want abortion there. So then she said to me, ah, and now this is the place for the exhibition. So maybe we also need to find this, this moment. Uh, maybe with festivals, uh, we need probably to uh, invent uh, these this new places that we can produce here, but then which a little bit what happened in Hamburg uh, with, uh, with Mathieu too. You invite uh, Dier Spiegel. Being part of the discussion, on the main discussion, uh, was, uh, was somehow getting out of the bubble, but I completely agree, the bubble is also the problem. Yeah, that's a good idea, that the festivals like this, uh, because we are all convinced here, I guess, and uh, that's, that's for sure, but they may be a good starting point for spreading and good news so let's the crusade start from here and uh, i guess also i'm sorry to say so but this is the moment we just have to finish our debate because there are other events that, that are supposed to happen but we are all all staying here all open for the discussion Krzysztof is here Sergio is here you are here so let's talk let's uh, continue this thank you very very much there is hope thank you